Scheiße! Okay, so hello, welcome guys to Sonic the Hedgehog, and welcome back to another vi standard video on my bench, to another standard sort of teardown video. And in this video, we are having something small or simple. Because in this video, we're having a look at an Intex Pure Spa. And what this is, is if you ever went to a home improvement store or if you have it, um, this is an inflatable spa. This comes to an inflatable spa, you know, an inflatable whirlpool. If you ever seen what that is, you just inflate it and then this unit attaches up to it. And this is what does the bubbles, what does the massage jets, what filters the water, what and what heats it and what sanitizes it. Now, this is the model, let me see here. SJB-HS dash 20 dash 1c so i searched up this model and <laughs> there is no videos featuring it there's absolutely nothing so yeah now most of the units i see online only have the air in them and the heater uh and that's pretty much it and only the secondary pump which is on the bottom which is usually replaced with a C filtration pump um basically uh, this also has the massage jets, also has a sanitizer and all that, so, yeah, it also, no, it, <laughs> all of them have that, but yeah, just as an info, um, yeah, there is even a model, I believe, which has a wireless panel, this one has it just mounted to this, uh, sort of, stem, but yeah, so, let's get over to the bench. Okay, so welcome at the bench, but first disclaimer. This isn't gonna be filmed on the usual phone holder and stuff, because, um, this thing is super heavy and super big. So just apology for that. Not that I have it cluttered with millions of stuff that can be cleaned up easily, but yeah. Just ignore that fact, and we shall just get on with this thing. So, this is, so what we have here, as said previous, is an Intex Pure Spa. Let's have a look at the nameplate first. So it's the Intex Pure Spa, model SGB-HS-20-1C. A pretty unknown model, to say the least. When I did some Google searches, we'll talk about it later. Um, it's 220 to 240 volts, because I live in Europe. Exactly, Czech Republic. But I won't tell my exact address, okay? 50 hertz, again, Europe. 2,600 watts, so 2.6 kilowatts. Now, that's because it's got probably a electric heater in it. It's IPX5. Um, caution. Read the manual. Some sort of QR code. CE. TUV Reinhard. Certified. Don't throw it in the bin immediately after you realized you bought an inflatable hot tub, that's, hot tub that's gonna get damaged by a woodpecker in just a couple of minutes. Yes, it's notoriously, it notoriously happens in the Czech Republic that woodpeckers puncture these. It happened to us once. And from that point, we never bought an inflatable hot tub. I never had one as well. EAC certified and blah, 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 trademarks um, and all that. Antex logo, logo at the top here. I hope I don't get copyright struck for showing that. But now let's have a tour around it. So on the front, you've got this column with the control panel. We'll have a look at that later. At the front here, you've got this plug. I don't know what that does. Now this is the water in and input, and it looks like it's split up into different two chambers. I don't know what that does. I don't know what that's for. Uh, this is the air output. There was a flap supposed to be over this, but that sadly one's missing. Uh, so yeah, I don't know where that is. Uh, when I seen it thrown out right next to our dumpsters, um, that was missing. Um, this uh, right here is the cap. Is there some sort of cap on the air output? And I was wondering what the fuck is that? And Sonic was pretty dumb. It's really obvious. This thing comes with a hose, which goes into here, and you can. And that means that you can use this this technological unit to inflate the hot tub. Isn't that good? I think it is a really good feature. Next, here's the water output, and again, split into two different pipes. I don't know what that's for. Anyways, on the side here, we've got this, which hides what looks into be a, some sort of filter. If you have a look in there, there it looks like there's a hose or a cable running into a, some sort of plug and that goes into a, some sort of tank. But a bit of an anticlimax because this doesn't unscrew. You have to unscrew four screws to take it out. It's just a handle. Yeah. On this side, you've got the drain. Right here, you've got the drain and you can see me here. Hello. And this is a, some sort of plug. I think it's so, something to do with the air input. If you want to have a look at the drain, somebody's already drained it before me, which is good. Um, again, you can see it's got a uh, Phillips head uh, screw head, Phillips head 
on it so you can use a standard screwdriver but, the, but like a phillips free i would use for this to take it out now let's have a look at the control panel by the way on the back there is nothing there is just some sort of caps screwed on i think that's something to do with the electrical stuff and the mains cable which i have already cut off there was an rcd on it but the rcd it was heat staked shut so no way to open that uh, here you can see the control panel it's got this acrylic cover on it so, so uh, to protect it from moisture and on the panel you've got the display just a standard some segment display led display because it uses light emitting diodes for the um numbers and sonic and yeah i was just wondering why do they have a smaller number? Is it for some sort of decimal point? And uh, no, that actually is to show the value which this is displaying degrees Celsius or liters or something. I don't know. Right below the display, you've got some indicators such as the water jets, bubbles, filter, um, sanitizer, heater. And then you've got a single indicator LED right next to the power button. Next, you've got the power button, as said previously. Here you've got up and down, uh, up and down arrows to set the to set the stuff on here. You've got another settings button, but this is degrees Celsius slash degrees Fahrenheit to set if you're on degrees Celsius or degrees Frankenstein. Sorry, Fahrenheit. Um, right here you've got the heater button, so this is to enable the heater. This button is very broken. I I can feel it. I can push it, but it's broken. So that might be the point of failure on this. There might be more. We shall see when we open this up. Uh, this is this button right here is to turn on the water jets. This is to turn on the bubble. This is to turn on the filter, and this is to turn on the sanitizer. So this is basically the smack bang unit, which has all of this stuff that the other ones don't. For example, the really common unit, a br some sort of brown one similar to this, has only the bubbles and doesn't even have the sanitization. So yeah, I got the big pants full whack unit apparently, but that's good because we'll see all the stuff in one. Anyways. Let me open this up. Um, there is only four screws around the sides, and it looks like that the cover should lift up. But first, but first, we got two questions. First, Sonic, where did you find it? Simple. I was just driving on my bike right past our dumpsters here in the village, and this was sitting there. So I immediately, so I immediately, um, uh, uh, bugged out my mom to take me there, and we put this into the car. It almost didn't fit, but we took it home. So yeah, and the second question, what do I expect inside of here? Well, I don't think there's gonna be really much, a control board, possibly a fan, most likely a vacuum motor, as I know from most of these things, um, or a special blower. Uh, I think there'll be a pump, definitely, a filter and a heater, yeah, and some hoses. I don't think that it will be really fill, filled, but I think it should have a temperature sensor. And if it's Intex, I think it should probably have flow meters. It should probably have a pressure sensor. It should probably have valves. Uh, no, just, yeah, I don't think there will be really much inside of here. So yeah, let me get this thing apart and we shall see what's in here. I got a bit of a disclaimer for you. I'm doing this chair down blind because there is a big reason. There is no service manual everywhere. I did a search on Google and the first search result seems to be a service manual, but it actually is a fucking owner's manual. So it seems worthless, but if I click on the other page, there is some useful stuff in the technical data for the schematics and calculations and stuff. So that is actually useful. But as you'll see shortly, we, there is nothing else useful. Owner's manual, owner's manual, owner's manual, owner's manuals everywhere, but then... I magically find a search result which seems to be, a, which, which seems to feature a service manual. Have a look, this one right here. Guide a SEMO, that seems like bullshit, but have a look. No service manual, owner's manual. You can go fuck yourself. So yeah, no nothing anywhere. I open up more search results, owner's manual, owner's manual, E50 code fix, E90 code fix. This is a giant fail. Okay, so we got the cover off and first, I took all the screws out and it was a total pain in the ass to get the cover off. Besides, it was a complete pain in the ass besides that screw being hidden right under that cap. Um, the other pain in the ass was there was there is a, some sort of plastic connection tube which goes between here and here. And that was just immediately like that was, un I was unable to take that out. It was a complete pain in the ass, but we got it off and look at this look how much stuff is in here and 
it looks like that somebody took the circuit board cover off and also the wire which goes to the control panel has been cut off. What? Somebody must have been in here. But first, before we have a dig down into this, I'm gonna show you something really interesting. Because if you see, the air output is on the air output is on this side, but the output out of the fan is right here. And that goes right into there, and that goes through there, and up onto a long tube, then goes around, then goes down, then turns around, and this control panel goes down, and it goes into here, which is pretty intriguing, because I don't know, because I, I know what that pipe is for, but we shall discuss that later. So, what do we have? Big size trade C that we have. First, we have the main pump, with a control box right at the top here. There will be possibly some electronics in that. We got the pipes, we got the aerator, or as someone might say, the bubble unit. Um, looks like there's a flap down in there, if you see. Yeah, there is a flap there. Uh, there looks like that there is the, maybe the filter. That looks into be the heater, and on the back is the control board. So, let's have a tour around the stuff that's in here. So first, around to the back. This is so heavy. Uh, uh, there you go. So, on the back you've got the control board. Oh, chuckload of relays. I mean, look, you've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, one, two, three, four. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven relays. So yeah, let's have a look at what we have at the on the control board first. So the so on the control board we've got the mains power transformer, the mains transformer basically uh, to transform the mains voltage down to a lower voltage in order uh, to power the devices on to power the ICs. Now the ICs and the projector for are possibly on the other side, but I'm not taking the board out and risking of ruining this entire thing because I want to keep this as some sort of monument or decoration item. Right here we've got some smoothing capacitors, you've got um, a voltage regulator because it's labeled U5, so it's a voltage regulator. Uh, then you've got a crystal right here for the microcontroller possibly, you've got a programming header, you've got a test connector, do not know what that does, you've got four relays up here, and it looks like that, that they are in pairs of two, and that they are some, then there is a circuitry to it. So to each sort of set of two relays, there is a fuse, two capacitors, an inductor, and an IC. And I don't have an idea of what that could be doing, but you can see that the same circuitry right here is mirrored over here. So take it basically that this is section one and section two. And next, you've got a smoothing capacitor here. You've got, what was that labeled? I think that's a MOSFET, that might be a voltage regulator, or oh, they are both voltage regulators, I don't know. Um, and here is, what is that, oh that's a power resistor, yeah I can see a ceramic resistor in there. And here we've got two more capacitors, possibly for smoothing again. It is to be certified of course, now we've got these terminal blocks on here and a relay here, don't know what that does, and then you've got a total of six relays here to switch different outputs. You've got chuck load of wires here now. By looking at this, this was definitely designed to be serviced and not just immediately tossed away when it fails. Because look, you've got labeling on the circuit board, A, B, C, D, uh, H, G, F, E, J, I, and the same is labeled on the connectors. It's it's labeled on the crimp connect on the crimps or by the, the or by flaps on the connectors, by little flags, which I think it's pretty neat. So yeah. Um, now, what this circuitry could be, it might be for switching the relays, it might be for detecting some sort of thing, I don't know, but let's have a look at the connector, so you've got flow 2, 84C, is that degree Celsius, that's 84 degrees Celsius, flow 1, 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius, um, you've got all these connectors, I don't have an idea of what those go to, more connectors. This seems to go down here, which goes down there, and connects to this heatsink, and connects to this part on the heatsink, and this part is a ginormous bridge rectifier. There's a small bridge rectifier right under there, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna see, it is right there. That black thing on there with the wires going into it. That connects onto here, the DC output goes to here. Now, yes, uh, this connects here, so the DC output is there. That, that goes to the relays. What the fuck? I don't get it. Um... 
And next you've got a lot of cables going here. Now this seems to be going up to here, which is the aerator. Um, let me move it out of, out of the way a bit. No, I can't. Um, you've got, let me shine some light down onto this so that way we see it better. There you go. So, um, by the way, it's raining outside if you noticed. Now this isn't an electronical part. This is a spacer uh, with a screw in it. I don't know what that is for. Anyways, um, spider webs everywhere. Jesus Christ. Hope there won't be a giant spider living in this because I'll pimp poop myself if that is gonna be the truth. Um, okay, so this is the main scene part. Okay, connects onto there and the ground goes down here through there, around and goes behind there. But then I'm noticing there's a grounding point on the heater here, and that seems to... What the hell? What the fuck? Wait, that, that, that seems to go to there, and it seems to go down here into grounding block. But it doesn't seem to be connected to the mains ground in any way. So what is the mains ground going into there, buggering off possibly to the pump motor, and then the heating element is just going down there and it's ungrounded? What the fuck? It's supposed to be grounded, like, dude, that's just a European electrical code, like, why? I don't know, that's really starting to piss me off. Anyways, just, why? Like, why you would have a ground going in there? Why do you have, a like, a grounding point which goes down into there? Why? Why? Look, uh, this ground is supposed is not supposed to go into a stupid terminal lock, which is nothing. It is supposed to go right into the outlet here. Let me unplug... What is the hot glue gun? What does part of the hot glue gun? This is the hot glue gun. I can unplug that. I don't need that at the moment. Look, this is a Czech, uh, Czech Republic... This is a Czech outlet. Look, the ground is supposed to go to this pin. And this goes to... This ground right here goes to that pin. But that buggers off somewhere inside of there. I don't know where. <coughs> Sorry, and that then just goes down there and why just wh why the fuck it, why the fuck won't you ground an appliance? Why, like, why the fuck would you have a grounding point if it doesn't go anywhere? Like why? Look, look, let me tug on this cable. Okay, that is improving at all. Let me just tug on the cable right here. Okay, I'm tugging on the cable right now. Oh, it's yep, yeah, it's scrimped somewhere, and I don't care. Anyways, um. That's pretty intriguing. Where's my meter? I want to... Like, why isn't it grounded? Where's my meter? I don't know where my meter is at the moment. But yeah. I don't know, like... I don't know. Why won't you ground it? You know what? Let me try and search for my meter. For my meter, but first move the probe from current to voltage. And let me set it to ohms. And set it to continuity. And let me show you that. That isn't connected. So. Like, look. Connect it right there. And let me try a really stupid method to prove you that this wire right here. That this wire is get connected down there. So if I pinch it right there. See? It is connected. So you can see it's connected, right? You can see buzzes. Beeps, and if I connect it to there, it's connected. So, look, to prove my theory, look how this is not gonna be connected. <laughs> All right. I'm so stupid. Well, Sonic, you suck. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> See, you can't judge the wiring by just looking at it. Like, dude, that is, like, <laughs> insane to ju to do. Anyways, let's have a look at the actual parts of this that I see. So, you've got uh, stuff right here. So, this is the heater right here. You've got a T right here connecting it. You've got a, some sort of ribbed hose. There might be an elastic hose of some sorts. That goes down in there. Then you've got a hose which seems to go up from the aerator. Uh, it goes up into there. It's hard, really hard to see. Yeah, it connects right there. Let me zoom in there. It connects right there. And that then goes right down there. And if I put my finger there, I can feel that there is a hole. So that, I don't know what that does. Um, maybe, maybe if that was to block up, maybe to let the air out. Who knows? Maybe to stop the motor from burning out. Now, what is this? This seems to be a temperature sensor. 
because judging by the way it's mounted, I think it's a temperature sensor. And this right here seems to be a solenoid valve. Actually not, because uh, if you look, this looks like to be a some sort of coil right here, some sort of coil sensor. And that down there seems to be an, and it looks like there's an impeller with a magnet on it, which then spins, which then the water spins the impeller, the magnet goes right past the um, sensor right here and it induces a magnetic field into it, which then gets picked up by the board right here, uh, which, um, yeah, basically it gets the magnet, basically the impeller sp gets spun by the water, the magnets on the impeller induce a magnetic field into the co in the coil, which gets converted to voltage, which then goes down and goes right there to the circuit board. So that's possibly a flow meter. I can see in another, um, temperature sensor right there. Now, what is this? Yeah, that's a cable. Look at that chunky connector. Can I unscrew that in any way? No, I can't. But yeah, I think that that might be the filter. Who knows? There's a T right here. Um, let's have a look around the other side. So here's the pump motor. Let me, let me turn this around again. <laughs> So right in here, I can see that there is a hose which runs from the filter down into there, and I don't know what that is. Um, th now this pump is split up right here and goes down there. That might go to the filtration pump. This is the pump housing for um, the jet pump. Right there is a flow meter. And here's a conjunction box, a terminal bo box for, for the motor. The motor will be right in there. For judging by its way, by, by the weight of this thing, I think that well, I think that motor will be pretty big. Um, now, I think now the filtration pump is down there. I'm sorry, I won't flip this around to show you, but I swear there is a filtration pump down there. Um, now let's have a look at the air system. So, right here you've got the aerator, and in here, if you have a look, is a flap. And then you've got the air intake right here, and this is where the cap was, the mysterious cap. The cap right here, that's what that is. Um, so let me flip this up. There you go. So, right in here, if you want to have a look, uh, you know, it really, you can see right in there is a filter grate, and that I think must be a, one of the filters. And then there's a carbon filter right in here. Um, and that then goes into here, and I think that will have a vacuum motor in it, possibly. Uh, g g judging by the sound of these things, I think it'll be a vacuum motor. Now, it looks like that the plug is the only way to intake air. So, when I seen it, like, I don't know, where is it taking the air from? Because that plug is in place. So, like, I seen it on display in a home improvement store and that plug was in. So, I don't know. Oh, idiot Sonic, stupid hedgehog. There's a grill right there and there's a hole right on the other side if you want to see. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... So I think that that's all that we're basically gonna um, take out of it. Uh, so let me pause right here and um, I shall just study this thing for a while. And yeah, so I shall do some studying on the web, maybe draw the schematic and yeah, I'll be here in a minute. Okay, so two painful hours of studying, drawing out stupid schematics and searching the whole Google to draw a complete blank. I managed to figure out a lot of interesting stuff, but first things first, the motor terminal bo box. That hides a load of important stuff which we didn't find anywhere in here. So let me show you. So first, right here is this big, big, big black potted box. It's a motor run capacitor. And that has a specific purpose because this is powered from a single phase outlet. Well. That's, you know, a good thing because you don't have to have a three-phase power, power outlet or a two-phase one. But that's a problem because if you don't use a brushed motor like uh, the bubble unit has, um, an induction, a three-phase induction motor, if you want to use a really powerful one, they aren't such powerful um, uh, shaded pole motors to run uh, such pumps. So um, that's why I have to use a run capacitor because... Um, Induction, these big induction motors with no shaded pole are two phase or three phase, and you have to uh, uh, add in another phase by using a capacitor like a shaded phase or a fake phase. Anyways, um, 
Right here is the control board, and on the control board there is the same power transformer as here. We've got a trimmer, I don't know for what, what that trimmer is. A lot of capacitors, we've got two big power resistors here, a relay. You've got three MOSFETs around here, actually four MOSFETs. Um, a some sort of uh, IC. On the other side, there is more ICs, but I won't take it out. Um, and right here is the thing that raised my eyebrows, because when I was looking through this and looking at the circuit board, the pump wasn't connecting up to any of these relays. So I was wondering, well, how the fuck is it switching on the pump? And also, these relays are a bit too puny to run such a pump. So, this is what this is for. Yes, uh, that's a contactor which switches the pump on and off. So yeah, uh, that's the uh, terminal, uh, terminal box away. So, let me tell you the values first. So, the heater is 2200 watts. It's a standard flow, flow heater. Something similar, something similar, to, similar to what you would find at a coffee maker. Um, next, um, the uh, aerator or the bubble unit motor is 1.1 horsepower, and the jet pump motor right here is uh, 0.95 horsepower. Fun fact: this entire thing with the water in it weighs over a ton. And, I, and there was no kind of info on how much water is in there. Uh, so I figured it out pretty easily. So uh, your standard physical calculations or um, conversions say that there's a real standard rule that one liter equals one kilogram or one kilogram of weight equals one liter of mass. So um, if you've got uh, if you got to calculate everything, so this thing weighs around 25 kilos. So, like, let's just calculate it, okay? So, the entire thing with four people in it weighs exactly 1,196 kilos. So let's count up. So basically, let's figure out um, how many liters of water can you fit into the tub. So if the entire thing weighs with four people in it and with the technological unit, exactly 1196 kilos let's figure out what everything weighs so first the technology technological unit comes out at around 25 kilos so minus 25 that's exactly 1171 kilos and the and the standard um average weight of a person is from 70 to 90 kilos so let's do an arithmetical average which is 70 plus 90 equals 160 divided by 2 is 80 so the average weight between in that range is 80 kilos so times 4 is 320 so 1171 uh, kilos minus minus um 320 kilos is how much um 751 kilos and that equals 751 liters. So 751 liters. I hope I didn't say any bullshit or hope I did I hope I did my calc calculations well but yeah 751 liters of water this thing is moving so you basically can figure out that the pumps have to be really powerful as well as you want a si si significant pressure basically you want a significant pressure on the output of a jet pump because it's supposed to massage you you know and also you want a significant uh, uh, static pressure on the output of this thing to do the you know to do the massage jets properly uh, so let's get over to the wiring so this is the power input as i said and the ground and the ground actually goes from here to the heater and from the heater it goes by this tap and goes down to the grounding block if you would need to ground something else in the vicinity i don't know why i would need that but it's a nice cool feature now this these two wires right here go off down into there and connect to this block which then goes to that and that is the sanitizer exactly a electrolytic which means that there's an electrolysis happening and um yeah so that's what that does these two wires right here are for the bubble unit uh, these two these wire this wire right here is for the pump and these four wires are for the heater next uh, this wire right these this these two pairs of wires go down to the big projectifier the small projectifier uses this which runs up to here so that the, so the small projectifier uh, goes right here so that connects to by why these two crimp connectors fast crimp connectors 
to that, which then go loops us somewhere else. You've also got somewhere else going from that, and you've got the DC output right there, and that's the DC output from the smaller one, or the input, should I say, the DC output from the smaller projectifier is here, and from the bigger one is right here. And this goes to the filtration pump, and the rest, I don't know. Oh yeah, I know, this is to the control panel, this is the flow meter too, the one right here. This is the flow meter one, is the same one right down there. Um, and then you've got 80 to 84 degrees Celsius, which is somewhere in the heaters, I believe it's on the other side of it. And then you've got these two, which uh, then you've got the 10 to 40 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius, which I'll show you later. Um, yes. What else? Now I'm thinking. Let's get over to, shall we get over to the schematic? Or sh do I have anything else to tell you? I'm really thinking right now. Um, so yeah, well, let's not get over to the schematic. So yeah, let's not get over to the schematic. Okay, so welcome to the schematic part of the video. Um, yeah, I think that this is the most interest where this is the most part. This is the part where most people will be interested because on the web there is only the owner's manual. There is nothing like the service manual. No schematics. No teardowns, no fixes, no nothing. So I was on my own right here. This is incredibly hard to put together. So, first of all, the sources of information that I had. First was my brain. Second was a physics education uh, student's book for middle schools and high schools. Which that's where I learned the symbols, schematic symbols for uh, the water and air systems. I knew the ones for um, the electrical, but I didn't know the ones for the uh, water and air. Third was the owner's manual, and fourth was this thing itself. And that splits up into different pairs, that's um, tugging on the wires and figuring out where they go, and second, taking different parts out and figuring out where the wires go, and third, examining the entire thing. So, we got, so with all that stuff together, I opened up Sonic Cat again, and um, we shall start over going through the schematic. So. We start over with the AC in, 230 volts, 50 hertz. So we've got live and neutral, and those go into the mains input. PE goes through here to the heater, and that then jumps off to the PE2, which runs down there, down here into the grounding block. Next, you've got the sanitizer outputs live and neutral that, go, that goes into the electrolysis transformer, which then goes into the electrolysis sanitizer. Um, next, you've got the aerator output, which runs all the way up to here, and that's the vacuum motor uh, right here for the aeration. That's the bubble unit, obviously. Uh, next, you've got uh, the jet pump, which goes down here. And that first, which there's live and neutral, which goes down here first into the control PCB, which also features the capacitor. I didn't draw the three faces out right here because I didn't want to. And that then connects to the motor. And it's not grounded, which is a bit of a problem. And next you've got the heater terminals, the neutral connects right onto here, and then you've got one, two, and three, which are basically, one and two are center taps, and um, three is the full power. So basically one is low, two is medium, and three is high. And I, by the way, and I, by the muscle resistors are drawn out in uh, the standard IC European style, but I did this one on the in the American style because I think it would be much easier uh, to, do, to feature the center taps right there. Um, of course, you've got the P coming in here, and the PE2 going to the block. Um, next up here, you've got the we've got you've got the connections that go to the control panel. And that's VCC, which supplies the voltage, ground, which is the minus, data plus and data minus, which uh, do the communication between the control panel and the uh, the control board. Um, next, you've got the flow meter one, which uh, is right on the output of the filtration pump. You've got the flow meter too, which is on the output of the heater. You've got the 84 degrees Celsius um, temperature sensor, which um, is connected, uh, which is uh, which is a overheat sensor for the heater. Um, next, you've got the NTC, which we then hook on another NTC, the 22 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. This is the water input. 50 degrees Celsius is the water output. Next, you've got uh, plus and minus, which goes to the filtration pump, and yes, the filtration pump is actually a DC pump, I think. Next, you've got the full projectifier, which you've got 
live and neutral in, which goes into that, and then you've got the DC out, which goes to the DC input on the circuit board. Exclamation mark because I don't know if that's the true, and this exclamation mark because if I, I don't know what that is. Next, there's much more pairs of wires, but I didn't even bother drawing that out because I wasn't willing to destroy this thing purely uh, to figure out, to, to do a stupid schematic. So yeah, that's pretty much the electronic side of things. The maximum power is obviously 2600 watts, it's the electro electrical side of things. Uh, so yeah, let's now get over to the water and air system. Okay, so now the water process air systems schematic. So first, we shall start over with the pipe. So the water input you see was divided in this way. The top bigger part is for the jets and the bottom one is for the filter and heater. The water output, the sort of surrounding ring is for the jets and the middle sort of thing is for the filter and heater and the output is just air. Uh, again, drawn in Sonic CAD version 1.0.5. Um, so first of all, the aerator system. So the air goes in through here, there's that cap on there, the mystery cap which I didn't even bother drawing because I think it doesn't make sense right in here. Uh, next you've got uh, the filter 1, which is which is, which is is basically just the standard grate which we've seen in there. Next you've got the carbon filter, which um, is on the input of the fan, uh, of the vacuum motor. Um, so I'll put up a picture, uh, if I don't forget I'll put up an image on the screen. For you also that way you know what a car what a carbon filter looks like then you've got the fan which is a vacuum motor um next of all you've got the check valve which is there right behind the motor to stop any water from going into the motor because if it was to go into the motor it would cause a problem like a big problem and then you've got the hose right here which taps off here which i do not know what that does next it goes out and then it goes into a pipe which goes up the control panel column then turns around goes down and then goes through a diaphragm valve on the output and then it goes, because there's a diaphragm, and then it goes into the air out. Get it? So this entire system right here, this entire block, is the is so that way if water was to go in here, the flap should stop it, or if the flap rotted away, it would go up, and if the, and they sh and the pipe is just long enough, so that way the water pressure won't be, and the atmospheric pressure in the pipe won't be enough to let the water in. And if it was to pass that, the flap would definitely stop it, because this is a plastic flap valve with a spring on it so it should be able to stop it in any kind of situation so basically the check valve this weird loop of the, this weird pipe loop and the diaphragm valve these three bits are purely to stop the water going in in any circumstances so be sure if you've got an intex pure spa be sure to check if all this works because if all this was to break break down well you could have be having a nice sort of hot tub party and suddenly you would hear a bang and the fan would immediately stop because water would go in there. So be sure to check if that is okay. So we de we described that. Now let's have a look at the water. So water system. So the water input goes through the main filter. It goes into here and it splits out into the and the water pipe basically splits out into these two things. So first, the jets are pretty easy, just goes into the jet pump and from the jet pump it goes out goes down here and out through the water through the water output and again these splits i just drawn it like this it, it is way easier now next the filtration and the heater is quite a bit more complicated so first it goes into the filtration pump and then from the filtration pump it goes into a flow meter named flow one next it can go two ways the first way is to go from here and to control the sanitizer and then it goes into here now this isn't a junction this is a freeway valve but i drawn it uh, in place of a junction because i think it would look better and be able to be better to um, uh, basically understand next next there's a tap taken off the gate valve taken basically taken off the sanitizer which is to drain the sanitizer that's the standard gate valve you will basically spin the screwdriver in in that sort of you basically um spin the screwdriver um in uh, that sort of Phillips head thing that was on there and you could, should be able to drain it and then that goes out, out to the water drain. Next, this right here, outputs, you can see that there's the other part which then this goes through the temperature sensor which is to 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. That then goes into the heater and then from the heater it goes into the flow 2 flow meter. Next it goes into the, the temperature sensor. Uh, the, uh, I forgot to label it, the um, 50 degrees Celsius right there. 
and then goes out, goes into the freeway junction again and goes through a check valve again. Yes, there is a check valve on there. And why is the check valve there? Simple. Because there is no kind of barrier on the split on in the pipe. Uh, there, the jet pump could easily, it, because it would be an easier path for it not to go onto the water out because there's a diaphragm somewhere inside of there. Um, the jet pump would ru rush its high pressure, high speed water right down here through the junction, through the sanitizer, which wouldn't be a problem, but it would go through the pump, destroy the pump, and it would go down here through the temperature sensor, through the flow meter, it would destroy the flow meters. It will destroy the heater, the heater would uh, survive, but the flow meters would be destroyed and the filtration pump would blow up. Um, so yeah, that's why, why a check valve is there. Um, so yeah, um, next, the sanitizer is just a standard electrolytic uh, fil filter again. As I'll show you, it is a little sort of cavity like this, and you've got... Uh, really four connections on there and those go to pairs of electrodes this is the single pair of the electrodes this is the first pair and this is then the second pair and that then will label this one two and label this a big one or sorry i think i should do a romanian one a roman one and this is three and four and this will be the romanian two and i'm gonna draw the connector right here so the connector looks something like this and it's got five terminals and one of them is a tapped ground which goes to an electrode in there so we'll label the free so we'll label it the free so the free is right here and now these two are the one and these two are the two and these are the one two and three and four and this is in the ground label it the five so I will we'll relabel it the five so yeah here you can see the di diagram of the connector and that basically goes into the transformer which goes into the control board so yeah I think that that's it will you f if you focus you fuck there you go so that's it for the schematic now let's get over to the filtration pump basically to the bottom of the unit okay so this is the bottom of the unit and if you want to see, there's a couple of spiders on here, but first, the input from the pump is taken from the bottom right there. Through that, is this is the filtration pump right here. Then it goes to that plug. That then goes through here, and it splits up, basically. Um, there is two, oh, oh my god. Yeah, so there's the drain which goes through the filter. From the filter, and there is two, there is basically a split, there is a pipe, Oh, the filter is right there, or no? It is there, so let me figure... Yes, there is a T. So the T splits up. And one of the splits goes into the filter down there, and the other one goes through here, uh, through that thing on there, back through there, and then up into the heater. So if you wonder what that is, now let me show you something. Look at that big-ass motor in there, you can see a part of it. It's a really big motor. But yeah, that's it. Now I think let's get to the let's get over to the end. Okay, so guys, this is the conclusion. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. I clearly learned something. I clearly learned that you can't judge wiring by just looking at it, and you also and I also learned that there is a load going on inside of these. Um, yes, I put my head back on for the conclusion at the end of the video. Um, I've also learned new types of components, for example, an electrolytic filter, I never known, known that that exists. Um, yeah, I learned a whole lot of new things, I learned how to draw proper schematics, and there might be something which might be useful for the community, and that's of course the first ever schematics of this thing. So don't worry, I'll take photos of the schematics and publish them online, maybe scan them on my printer downstairs, and publish them online anywhere I can, so that way people can have access to the schematics whenever they need them. Uh, so let me just close this thing up. One moment, please. Oh, fuck. If you listen to me, you fuck. There you go. This stands for Notepad. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. So yeah, 
uh, I made probably the first ever publicly available schematics of this thing. And it was really intriguing to do make my own schematics and to do everything without a service manual. Because if I had a service manual and there were schematics there, I would just print them out. But I didn't this time. And I actually learned how to do stuff. So yeah. Um, I think it was a really intriguing teardown. Um, I hope you liked it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.